Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is me, your home science teacher Jasneet Kaur. Before getting into the video, don't forget to like my content and share my videos. Do hit the subscribe button if you have not done till now. You can press the bell icon to receive notifications of my next uploads. In today's video, we will continue with the second part of chapter 6 of class 11th which is media and communication technology. For the first part of this chapter, do check out the description box below. In the previous video, we have covered an introduction of the chapter, meaning of communication and brief introduction of classification. Before starting with today's topic, I would like to let you know that in the process of communication, speaker are the one who is speaking we refer them as a sender and the one who is listening is known as receiver. Sender is the one who sends the message and receiver is the one who receives the message. In this video, we will do the classification of communication in detail. So make sure you watch this video till the end. Starting with the very first classification, that is classification on the basis of type of interaction. It is further divided into two categories, one-way communication and the second is two-way communication. Let's understand what one-way communication is. One-way communication is that process of communication where the sender passes the information or message to the receiver and the receiver receives the information but unable to give the feedback because it is a one-way communication. The example of this can be politicians during public speeches, news reporters on television, radio jockeys on radio, etc. If you see in all these options, only one person is speaking and the other people are listening. And the one who is listening cannot give his or her feedback to the speaker. The next one is two-way communication. This type of communication is between two or more people. Two-way communication allows people to interact with each other, share their thoughts, ideas, information, knowledge, etc. The example of this can be friends interacting with each other, Communication on phone, interaction between interviewer and interviewee. The next classification of communication is on the basis of levels of communication. This is further categorized as intrapersonal communication, intra-organizational communication, interpersonal communication, group communication, inter-organizational communication and mass communication. Let's talk about each one of them in detail. Let's start with understanding what intrapersonal communication is. It is the type of communication which person does with oneself. It may include daydreaming, self-talk, observation, imagination, visualization, even constant thinking of certain events is also a part of communication with oneself. Next is interpersonal communication. Students understand the difference between intrapersonal and interpersonal carefully because most of you commit mistakes by in interchanging their meanings. Interpersonal communication is a type of communication which allows the exchange of thoughts, ideas, information between two or more people. It can be done verbally or through gestures, facial expressions, eye contact, etc. The example of this could be interacting with any of the family member, talking to your classmate or interaction between doctor and patient. The next category is group communication. It involves more than two people in the process of communication. For the effective group communication, 
Use of audio visual aids can be done. Example of this can be interaction between teacher and students in the classroom, interaction between manager and the team members, etc. Next is mass communication. As the name suggests, mass communication means passing information or interacting to large number of people at one time. In this type of communication, knowledge, information is imparted to the large group of people at one particular moment with the help of technology. Example of this can be promotion of any new product in the market, passing information to people of same geographic location during any disaster, or a random news on everyday basis which we observe on, on our news channels. The next one is intra-organizational communication. As the intrapersonal communication focuses on the communication within oneself, similarly, intra-organizational communication refers to the process of communication within the different departments of same organization. Students, here you can, can refer the example of your own school where you see science department teachers interacting with maths department teachers or social science department teachers interacting with English department teachers. Now, the next one comes inter-organizational communication as Interpersonal communication refers to the communication between two or more people. Similarly, interorganizational communication refers to the interaction between two or more organizations. Here you can take the example during inter-house sports competitions, one school interact with the other school for conducting sports event. It can be done by interacting with the person face to face or through the support of technology. Now here students, you need to understand in both inter-organizational and intra-organizational setups, communication does not take place among the departments or the structure of the organization. Rather, it is always human beings working in these organizations who communicate with each other. The next classification of communication is based on the modes of communication. One is verbal communication and second is non-verbal communication. Verbal communication is that communication which includes the use of words and sounds to express yourself. Whereas, non-verbal communication is that type of communication where message is transferred through eye contact, symbol, sign language, facial expression, etc. The best example of non-verbal communication you all can find at your homes. When you as a child commit some mistake in front of your guests and your mother gives you looks, so you know by that moment that you have done something wrong. Let's move to last one classification of communication on the basis of involvement of number of human senses. This type of classification focuses on involving more number of senses while learning any concepts. For example, rather than studying a topic from the book, it is more effectively understood and learned through videos or films. This is because while watching, you involve more number of senses like you see, read and listen simultaneously. Alright students, so I hope that's a lot for today and uh, I'll see you with my another video in which I'll discuss the process of communication. You can find the links of all the parts of the chapter in the description box below. Don't forget to like, 
share and subscribe this channel and my videos with your family and friends. Do give your feedback in the comment section below. It helps in boosting my morale. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye and take care.